If you think you would like to set up JW Player on your website but are not too sure about using JavaScript, here's a short tutorial to show you how easy it is. First though you must download the player software from the JW Player site, then extract the files, put them in a folder, as you can see we've called our folder JW Player, and then FTP the folder and files to your web directory. Remember in order to work, the player needs to be on a remote server, not on your local computer. So here's the basic setup code which you can download from our Red City JW pages. You can see that we've called our first div video area. For those who are not too sure about that, a div is like a container to put your web code in and the end of this div area is the slash tag down here. Put the whole of this div including JavaScript where you want to put the player on your web page. JavaScript is quite often shunted off into the web page head but here it is important to show how all the code develops. The next line loads the JW player JavaScript code from the folder on our website. This code does all the hard work and thankfully we don't need to deal with it in detail. All we need to know are the basic instructions. The next div we have called media space one. It's empty and it's where JavaScript is going to put the JW player. A bit of text is there to tell you this, but you can just ignore it. It'll be covered up. You don't need to set any sizes for this div. The player will sort that out. Now we can go into the JavaScript setup code. First we're going to set up the player in the media space one div we saw above. Note that the brackets after the word setup are different. The first is an ordinary bracket and the second is a curly bracket. Now we load in the shockwave player software from our website folder and we're going to add some parameters which define how the player will look and behave. The first is control bar and that's the bar at the foot of the player controlling play, pause, volume, etc. Here it is set to bottom, but you can also set it to above or none. Above simply means that it floats just above the bottom of the video, and none obviously means there's no bar at all. Why should you want none? Well, since it's so easy to set up external controls for JW Player, you might want to design your own instead. The next three parameters are pretty obvious. Volume sets the player volume when it first loads up. Width is the width of the player window in pixels. And the height is obviously the height in pixels. However, if you're going to add a playlist window to the bottom of your player, the height will have to include this dimension as well. The next three lines refer to the files you are going to use. The first is the file name and location of the thumbnail you want to use. Unlike YouTube, this could be any frame from the video, or your own logo, or the first frame of the video credits. It's completely up to you. The next is the file name and the location of the video itself. As you can see, we are using a video stored on YouTube. JW Player can also manage files stored on any other server, including your own, although you might have to watch your bandwidth limits with this. The third line is title. This will only be relevant if you add a playlist window and you could also add description which gives some extra information for the user. The last parameter is plugins. You can add numerous add-ons to JW Player which can improve its functionality and professional look no end. Here, we, here we've got the most obvious, getting the player to play HD videos when they're available. One of YouTube's irritating characteristics is having to select high definition by hand. With this HD plugin, JW Player does it all automatically. You can see when it's working by the HD tab in the top right corner. Uh, if the player is struggling to play HD, you can click on this tab to switch it to a lower resolution. Just notice a couple of things before we finish. Each line above ends with a comma, except this last line. Also, the two terminating brackets are here, but in reverse order plus a semicolon. Finally we've got the two end slash tags for the end of script and the video area div and that's it. Hope that's clear enough 
as you can see, it's not really too difficult.